Greetings, I've been shopping. What we have here is a Honeywell Evo Home, which is basically allows you to control your uh, boiler, radiators and whatnot. It's basically an intelligent heating controller. You may have seen advertised on TV the, um, the British Gas Hive setup. Well, that's basically internet enables your boiler so you can remotely can turn it off and on and bits and bobs like that. This lets you control the the boiler through the web or a smartphone if you wish if you buy the extra mobile access kit and will control all the radiators individually. Now you may or may not have heard of zoning where you can split your house up into various um, zones so you're only, you're only heating one part of the house and not another. Well this lets you split the house up into 12 zones which can be um, up to 12 radiators or if you've got as I've got 13 radiators typically you can actually join some of them together and bank them into a single zone. So you can basically you can say for example that in the morning uh, knock the, the living room uh, radiators on ready for when you come back come downstairs when you go off to work everything shuts down when you come back home from work before you get into work the living room comes on when you're ready for when the kids are ready for bed the kids ones have come on when you're ready for bed yours has come on as well when everyone's asleep it all shuts down and the cycle can continue on and so forth so it's really quite an intelligent system so let's see what we've got in the boxes we won't worry about that for now. So look first of all at the Evo Home base pack which is the Evo Home itself plus a wireless receiver to go on the boiler and these fascia packs. As you can see it comes as standard with a white fascia. If you don't want the white fascia you can have a black fascia or a silver fascia. So what we have here is unceremoniously tipped out onto the floor onto the table. We have the Evo home itself which it's hard to tell when you look at the, the picture of the Evo home in the adverts. It's hard to make out just how how big the, the Evo home is. Now to compare here's a DVD case. As you can see it's a little over half the size. It's about the same just a touch over the same width and it's about half as high. So if you grab a DVD case, hold it in half, then that's how big the, uh, the Evo Home is. Also we have this, which is a BDR91 uh, boiler relay, which connects wirelessly to this. And that's mains powered. That and this are the only parts which are mains powered, I assume, unless you have the um, the underfloor heating controller, because you can have uh, a, con a multi-zone controller for underfloor heating, and those, I believe, are um, mains powered. So instead of having these, you have uh, wireless thermostats around the rooms, and obviously you have the, the multi-zone controller then for all your underfloor heating. So we'll take a look at that in a little while. There's a stand with built-in charger. Interestingly, interestingly, it has two different part numbers, even though it's, it's the same part. And this, I've never seen one of these before. It's a normal figure eight cable, but it's a right angled end. I'll plug this in. You can 
can see it's right angle just to just so that the cable hides itself away around the back. Seal the wrap off the front and there's a battery cover there. Um, I as well show you to you can pop these covers off fairly simply. There we go, it just it's popped to the side. Um, and there's this cover which covers the which basically separates out the two AA rechargeable batteries. Uh, Chameleon brand, never heard of that. But they're nickel metal hydrides, 2100 milliamp hour. And as soon as I pull that tab out, that's booting up. Wants to know the date. Let's set it to today's date, which is I don't know. Twenty second. And daylight saving automatic. Uh, we'll have it on AM and PM mode, and it's six thirty seven. Okay, that. And it's already bound to other devices in the pack, which means it's already, these two already know about each other. So there's no need to mess around trying to train one up to the other. These already, they came in the box together, they know, they know how to talk to each other. And that can actually go either in the stand like that. Or, as you saw, it's already got batteries in it, so you can actually take it around and take it with you and then dock it back on there. Now, this is the brains of the outfit, and this is the bit that transmits to all of the other items. So wherever this goes, it's got to be somewhere where all the radiators can actually communicate with it. It can hear them, they can hear it. So... Anyway, um, we've got the home screen, or to add more devices, we can go to the installation menu. Let's go to the installation menu. And as you can see, it's got a guided configuration. I have not done this. This is the first time I've actually powered this up and got this far. I've seen the clock and then I'll just put it back in the box for this video. So we've got a guided configuration. We have zone settings, system devices, parameter settings. Um, add a zone, a gateway, RF comms check, and a factory reset. Okay, let's let's have a go. Let's do the. Let's come back to this a second, actually, because there's no point adding other stuff if all the other stuff is still in the boxes. And we'll come to these in a moment. I'll put this over here to come to another item, which sorry is mains powered and that's the mobile access kit. Now this basically acts as an interface again wirelessly to that. It just connects to your broadband router and connects back to the central um, Honeywell servers and you can either use a, an app for your phone or you can use the um, you can use the web uh, web interface that's built into the the Honeywell website. You don't connect, you, you don't communicate directly with this. Unfortunately, this does rely on the Honeywell website. So I assume the Honeywell website is going nowhere anytime soon because if it does, then these will stop working, of course. But so this is the other mains connected device. It comes with a. European adapter and mains adapter, uh, UK mains adapter and the, the adapter itself. Just take one of these, that plugs on. That's 
obviously and does plugs in and just pose it like that. Um, at the moment you can see it's not got a link light to the internet because I haven't set that up at all yet. What else came with it? Um, just a bit of cardboard. Um, comes with a free little network cable. And an installation guide. An installation is basically connect to power, I've done that, connect to the internet, I haven't done that yet. Uh, bind to the wireless heating control. Now for this you follow the binding instructions for your heating control which are in this manual which came with the, the Evo Home itself. Let's have a quick look at that. There's Installation guide and user guide. And ooh, in fact, the first page I flipped open to then um, connecting to a remote access gateway. So it says, let's see how easy this is to bind the remote access gateway. You press and hold the, bu the button on the base of the gateway until, unit, until you see a flashing light next to the next to that. So that's flashing. On this, we go to. Let's go. To, let's have a look. See if there's anything on. Try system devices. Just tell it it's got a remote gateway. Oh, there we go. Activate get binding on the remote gateway. Now press the bind button, which I assume is that. Binding signal received properly. That has now got a solid green light. This now knows it's got one of them. So we have boiler relay, remote gateway, sundial valves, outdoor sensor. We haven't got an outdoor sensor fitted. Um, it's got the option for one. Um, go back and tell it no. Um, sundial valves. I assume these are the sundial valves. No, they're not. Therefore, hot water tank. So it's not. They're not sundial valves either. So, anyway, that is almost ready that needs to be connected to the internet then and then you actually go online and set it up i'll have a look at that later on and that's it for those so that just sits just tuck it up next to your act your um next to your broadband router just again somewhere where this can hear it so this can go to one side let's have a look what these are well, I know what's in the boxes because there's four in each box because I ordered 13 the other one came loose in a jiffy bag presumably they just break open a four box and pop them out so what you have is a jiffy bag two batteries this is the the radiator head itself. Now to compare size wise you can see it stands it's not as tall as as the unit when it's on. In fact it's the same height as the unit when it's off its base but not on its base and if I compare with the standard TRV head this is a Danvos Raz C2 so you can see it's a it's a little bit bigger than a Raz C2 especially once it's got the once it's got its um, adapter on it, because this will fit directly onto uh, a lot of standard uh, thermostatic radiator valve heads. 
but if you've got some such as the, the Danvos ones, you get this adapter and the adapter clips on and then this screws onto the adapter like that. So that's the full height of it with um, with the adapter compared to your conventional one. It's a little bit wider, a little bit deeper and in this case about 30% taller. So you get that, you get this adapter collar. There's a few screws which come in here as well. I have to look in the manual to find out what they are. What they do. I don't think any manuals come with the red heads. Uh, oh, yes there is, there's paperwork in the box. So let's just put that to one side. Take another couple of red heads out. More batteries, everything comes with batteries. And in the bottom of the box we have four little adapter plates. Uh, not the adapter plates, sorry, um, the, the brackets for the, the display. Four adapters and a brief description of what it is, what's in there, where all the screws go, which is, which is good ones. Yeah, the screws are for securing the radio control, radiator controller. Um, there's a screw at the bottom just to, so you can fasten it in place. Presumably to stop someone pinching your radiator controller if you're in a public, you know, if you're using these in a public location or something. And two for securing the battery compartment which is under there. Yeah, there's two screw screw points there. Obviously if you're using this in a domestic environment you may not want to bother with, with those and just keep the screws. But it's your choice. The front display on the European ones it's apparently sits that way and swings out like that. On the British ones it sits that way. You can use it flat like that or you can angle it up and if you want it fastened in an upright position that is where these little plates come in into play because these go under there they just snap in place and the display sits like that so you've got it permanently visible at a, at a higher angle then if you want it to be normally on display. Why would you want it on display? Well, it's because when it's normally running it'll show you the temperature setting for the radiator. So, up up and down and that's going to boot up now. You can actually adjust from 30 right the way down to 5.5 or oh, back, back, 5 degrees. And you hear it motoring down now to try and adjust its adjust the position of the uh, of the drive head and or off. And the batteries on these, I believe, in normal use are expected to last for two years, I think, for alkalines. You want to wind back in? Anyway, so, in fact, what the first thing it's doing now is trying to cycle the valve. I believe so it knows how much travel it's got to uh, open and close, I believe. Let's look at the manual, see if it says anything about that. So yeah, insert batteries and set the language. Um, this must be the one I popped open earlier on then, because the first thing it does actually is it asks you to set the language, so I picked the wrong one there. And then you establish a radio connection, and then you um, put it on the radiator. So 
I'm not going to establish the radio connect the connection on one. I'm going to set up all 13 of them ready to go. And that's most of the radiator valve heads powered up. I'm just going to put the batteries in the last one and snap the cover on. As you can see it comes up with the software version and then here's the language selection. We've got a choice of English, Spanish, Dutch, French, oops, Italian, German. Yeah, that's your choice. So go to choose which one you want. And that sets it, and there we go. And at the moment it's in unbound mode. If I press this, it's not showing us what the um it doesn't know it doesn't know anything about this controller, so it's just it's just a valve head on its own. Also, we have this cover on the side. I'll just show you briefly what's in there. We have what's in here is a micro USB connector and presumably it's used for programming but the, the instructions say this is actually used for an external window contact. Now these can automatically detect if the if you open a door or a window and the temperature in the room suddenly drops sharply what this will do to conserve energy is it will go oh you opened the window you must have done I'll just shut off and it spins itself off completely and it waits until the room sort of returns back to temperature a bit and then uh, in fact I think it waits half an hour uh, by default and then it'll turn itself back on so it won't try and heat a room that you've got blazing the heat straight outside so that's what's there in fact it says in the instructions that it's a, a mini B plug. I'm sure it's. A, I'm sure that's actually a micro B plug. Oh, in fact, yeah, the instructions do say it's a micro plug. Okay, so that's the last of the the radiator heads. I'm going to try and use the manuals as little as possible here. There's not much in the manual for the for the rad head that's actually required here. It just tells you how to fit the batteries. There are some. Um, settings which you can adjust in the in the radiator head for the backlight and the um, window function um, and if you've actually got an external uh, window contact and if you haven't it just uses automatic function and there's also an option here for the, um, the valve stroke if you can take a look there uh, if it doesn't, if when it tries to wind in the radiator, it doesn't fully close off the radiator, there's an option there, and you, you can adjust the length of travel on this, so it'll actually try and drive a lot more to hopefully um, work with other radiator heads. I, I'll probably end up having to do that on this on these ones, but uh, I'll try it without first. Anyway, oops. Let's see what happens if we go into, I'll just try it through, I'll go through the guided configuration. Let's see how idiot proof this thing is. See if I can do it without going into the manuals anymore. So guided configuration, zone control configuration. Yep, because I don't have a hot water tank. This will remove previous zone settings. Yeah, I haven't got any. Okay. Do you require to control the heat demand? Yes, because it'll turn the boiler on and off. Boiler relay into bind mode. Okay. Um, should normally have to do this, and I can't. I've got to put a power lead on that. Hang on. This, incidentally, is what's inside the BDR91 boiler controller. It's not an awful lot. There's an Atmel microcontroller there and a few other bits and pieces and not a lot else. I assume there's a there's gonna be a power supply chip on here somewhere seeing as all this is running actually on the mains. And my guess is it's that one. So put boiler relay into bind mode and then press the bind button below. So let's have a look. I've 
press that. All I do is just press and hold that. I assume that's in bind mode. Let's have a look. Binding signal received properly. Okay. So thermostat. Select heating zone type. Thermostat, which is one zone or mixing valve or zone valves or radiator valve or underfloor heating. Now this is going to be a radiator valve. How many zones need to be controlled? I'm actually going to have I think I need 10. Hang on. Yeah. 10. I'm going to there are 13 of these. Three of them are going to be grouped together as a, as a set uh, for some of the small rooms out the back and I'm going to link the living room and the room I'm in now, the dining room as well because there's such a, a big open doorway between the two I might as well treat them as, as a single zone. So, how many zones need to be controlled? Ten. Press to edit the name. I assume this is going to be the first zone, is it? So, um, in fact, I think you can just keep these. Um, living room, dining room, kitchen, bedroom, one bedroom, two bathroom. Um, yeah, I'll just change this. In fact, let's go back a second. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, okay. So these are the names it's come up with. Um, I'm happy with that one. That one I'll change. So you just, you can just delete them. It's a bit like typing on a sat-nav screen, really. Turn caps lock on and off there. So anyway, there's um, maximum of 15 characters in there. You've got um, your capitals and lowercase. You've got numbers and a few other foreign symbols as well. Again, upper and lowercase. There's no slash in there. There's, there's very basic punctuation and, and whatnot. So you can't put a forward slash or backslash in there. So that's the last one done. So I've named all the all the ones that I that I want. Use Evo Touch's built-in sensor to control the living and dining room. Now I think that's the one built into this. So I don't actually need to because I think I'll be using the built-in sensors on all of these to uh, to to do that. So if I say no to that, living dining living and dining room, press the bind button on button on the sensor. So let's pick two of these. So I think I can take two. So press and hold. Yep. And I think I can do two together. Oops. Let's come back to that one. Yeah, press it once it says unbound and then press and hold. So it says bind. Um, press the bind button on the sensor. And it doesn't want to bind yet. So what do I have to press it once more? Ah, there. Press it once more. Binding signal received properly. Uh, do you want, oh, there we go. Do you want to add more radiators to living and dining? Um, yes. So press the bind button on the actuators, then press the bind button below. I've already done that, so there we go. So we've got two here now, which are now successfully talking to this, and they will in fact know their own name, which I assume, will it scroll? No, it doesn't want to scroll. Okay. No. So, Next, do I want to use the built-in sensor to control the study? No. Press the bind button on the sensor. That's. 
Once that's done, it tells you bindings complete. I noticed I added two radiators and it didn't let me add a third, so I'll have a look in a second. And <clears throat> it takes you back to the installation menu. Now you can change the zone settings here, and what I want to do is I want to tell it, I want to edit two of the zones, namely living and dining room. And you can choose on the next page, application setting, single and multi room zone. Because there are two radiators in two, two rooms, I'm going to put this in as a zone with multiple rooms so it knows each radiator needs to control itself rather than having, uh, well, presumably rather than having one radiator sensor controlling both. Yeah, it says here in the help screen that the uh, what happens with the different zones. Take a look at this one once more. Now will this let me add a third one? There we go, three actuators bound. So yeah, so the third one I had to go in and as you saw then I've stepped in and and done that. I don't know what it means by two way, right? So you can choose with the sensor whether you've got an inter uh, you've either got Evo Touch sitting in the room and using its own built-in thermostat, or you can use the ones which are built into the rads. So which is what's been set there. So These allow you to actually adjust the radiator heads and it may be you, you could be in a commercial environment for example where you wouldn't want anyone to be able to remotely tweak these, these settings. So you could lock a particular radiator off at that point and you would lock off the, the controls so it's what you've set on this and nothing else. Uh, we've got the window function, which is yet yeah, it's enabled. So if you if it detects a sudden draft, it knows someone's opened a window or something. Drop the red. Minimum maximum set points. These are the set the temperature limits you can set on these radiators to adjust how far up they'll go. In fact, these will only go up as far as 30 anyway. So uh, I don't know why that's got 35 on it. We'll take a look at that. Um, Yeah. Optimization. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you anything about optimization. I'd have expected a help option there. You can see this option, the application itself could have been a radiator valve or underflow heating or uh, a mixer valve or, or zone valves. If you've got zone valves, this can control um, zone valve, you know, normal zone valves in the, in the same way. Obviously, with these, you don't need them. In fact, zone valve would be adjusted with one of those. And a mixing valve is used for adjusting water temperature. It says there. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it from, from here. We've done guided configuration, just been through the zone settings. Let's take a look at system devices. That's uh, boiler demand is controlled by boiler relay. Uh, you could have an open therm bridge if you've got a modern boiler. Uh, mine doesn't support open therm, but if you had that, you'd presumably use an open therm bridge instead of that. Um, or no boiler controls. What else we got? That's just putting the boiler relay into bind, bind mode. We've already done that. Uh, the remote gateway, we've got the remote gateway set up. Don't have any sundial valves, we don't have any outdoor sensors. Okay. Parameter settings. Internal sensor offset. This is to calibrate the temperature of EvoTest's own sensor. We're not using it. 
cycle rate allows up to six cycles per hour which is how often the boiler will switch on and off in any given hour in order to optimize the control performance of the system so instead of chattering the boiler on and off on off on off on off it'll run it get the system up and then shut off up to uh, six times per hour in that setting obviously you can adjust that up and down in fact let's see how high you can take it three three to twelve I know mine goes on and off all the time anyway so uh, I'll take it back down to the default for now minimum on time so that's the minimum time the boiler will be will run before shutting back down and there's a fail safe operation as well which is if it loses this it'll run the boiler system for 20% of the time just to provide some heat to the system or you can have fail safe disable which means that if it, if it loses communication with this the boiler goes off so that's what that is and it's defaulted to disabled optimization we have several options here and you can choose to have Evo Touch learning the heat, how long it takes for a room to heat up so that, for example if you've got these, these timers set to come so you want 20 degrees at 7 p.m. this will learn so it knows that oh it takes 25 minutes to heat that room up so if you want it on at 7 p.m. I'll turn the boiler on at 25 to 7 so it's all nice and toasty and warm just as you step through the door or we have delayed starts and optimum stops as well so if the room will still be within half an hour uh, half a degree of the current set point it'll turn it off up to an hour earlier to save energy so if it knows it takes a while for the room to shut down to cool back down it'll go ah, I'll knock the I'll knock the heating off early you don't need it it'll, you, you won't even notice so let's take a look what have we got here um, and that's what you've got a choice of really you've got blade start optimum start optimum stop I assume I can't oh ah we can choose multiple ones here so let's look at what that delayed start one was we'll shorten the heat up time if the full hour is not needed yeah we'll leave that for now and okay it maximum preheat time is this is how long it, it you'll allow the system to warm to, you know it shouldn't take three hours to warm a room up and you know I'm not in a cave um, so I'll shorten that a bit and that's pretty much it you can do an RF comms check on the zones of course it's going to talk to all those because oh there we go it wants to test them when they're actually in their proper uh, proper location you'd have to put these in test mode anyway so I'm not going to do that I'll go back out RF test remote gateway signal strength excellent yeah of course it is it's there okay that so this be handy especially where what I've done here I've got this temporary cable on here and this will let me test the this before you know I can, I can put this in a location and I know where I'm going to put this is pretty likely to work in because I'm not putting it in the in with the boiler because the boiler's on the wrong side of a of a cavity wall so I can actually put this closer into the house so this should work pretty much anywhere in the house then if I go wandering off with this away from its base it should still work but if you're unsure if you happen to get walls about six feet thick or something like that you may want to set something like this up temporarily just using a normal mains cable just to power it just connect to the neutral and either of the live connectors in here just so you can set this up to uh, to make sure that where that goes this can communicate with it before you actually run all the uh, only multi-core cables and whatnot just a curiosity if I 
ramp one of these up. We'll see how long it takes it. It should, at some point, this should it should say that's calling for heat. That'll tell this that it's calling for heat. So this tells this that it's calling for heat. So this turns on. So we should see a, a relay contact come on on that shortly, unless it's because it's hasn't long turned off. Anyway, that's all the settings there. We've already got a gateway, so that's greyed out. Um, I could add another zone if I wanted to. I can oh, there we go. That's just clicked on. Um, there are default names in here, uh, which you can, of course, edit. I'm not going to because I don't want one. And if I exit from this, that is in its normal day-to-day -day mode. Now, a pretty important step, of course, is changing out the red head, taking off your old one and fitting your new one. This one is for the room I'm in. Let me just double check. Yep, living dining room. I said it doesn't scroll. You get up to nine of the characters on here. So if you've got two bathrooms and you call them bathroom space one, bathroom space two, you're not going to tell the difference. So with bearing that in mind. But we have this. So all you're going to do is spin off the collar and remove your old rad head. Obviously this will vary depending on your type of radiator. That comes off. Now some, this will mount straight on. For the ones which don't, such as these Danvos ones, you'll either get the adapter. This adapter fits the Danvos RAs. If you've got a Danvos um, RAV or one of the other ones, such as an RAVL, you need to, um, you need to purchase the adapters separately. So we've got this collar which snaps on over that, so that sits over the base. We have a nut and bolt to fasten it in place, and these will go either way around, whichever is convenient, so I can put the nut in the recess at the back. Screw that home. Now, this is one place where I would recommend. I don't think, to be honest, you don't. I don't think you need the, the main user manual for the for the main unit. But this one is fairly important. The HR ninety two instructions, because they do tell you how to actually. I mean, any, any clown can fit the batteries, but they do tell you how to actually fit the new head. You've got some instructions on page six, and you've actually got to get you've got to get part of this apart before you can actually fit it. And to do that, we slip that across to the unlocked position. This can then pull out if necessary. You know, is a is a thing you can not really grip on there. The way I did that then is just basically put your fingers inside and sort of push them apart. So do that and pop it out. You then spin that all the way out until it stops. So that's the that's the full open position, and screw it on top of the adapter, or if you don't need an adapter, straight onto the the radiator head, of course. As far as it will go, like that. This then you can put in the in the position that you want it to, so the indentation latches in is no longer visible. Um, that's these catches here, I think, which will go under that lip, and the, the gearing around the edge should disappear. So that can go like that, and then latches in. And after approximately a minute, it's going to cycle itself to give itself a full travel of, uh, test of the of the head. You see that's pretty much solidly in place now. Once more, 
you can put the screw through the bottom if you wish. I want that tucked in out the way to the side. I could have it facing forward if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I want to have the display up like that and around to the side. So we'll just wait for that to cycle itself. In fact, the boiler's just kicked in, so I should be able to hear if this isn't, if this hasn't closed all the way up. Obviously, if you've got your boiler running and these things are off, and yet it's still get, it's still getting, you know, the radiator is still getting warm. You know, you need to change the uh, setting in the menu on that. And to get into that setting, we as well take a look anyway. We accidentally did it earlier on. You press and hold that. And you're in. So you've got the language setting, then we've got the backlight, so which you can the window duration and the temperature settings, these are all covered in the manual. This is the stroke one, which if this isn't cool, if this doesn't make this radiator go cold, then that stroke one will allow this to uh, you change that to full stroke mode, and it should wind it down properly. There's an option here, so you can set the um, you can calibrate this to make sure that this is showing the temperature of the room rather than the temperature of sitting right next to the radiator. And there's another option then, I keep going the wrong way around with this, battery, you can choose the battery type, whether it's got alkaline lithium or nickel metal hydrides. Presumably so it can use the, um, it can calculate its, ba its uh, battery settings accordingly. Option 10 is an interesting one for diagnostics, because if you choose that, and then flip to number 1, and then set it, it'll actually show you the position of the valve. In this case, at the moment, it's fully it's spun off. If you um, if the valve was open at the time, it would show you it the percentage whether it's fully open or part open or whatever. The one bit on this system, of course, that would, if anything, need professional installation, is the boiler controller, and that's quite simple. It's got a live and a neutral connection, which I can get at if I pop this cover open. There we go. Try not to snap the cover open and we have a neutral two live connections either of which you can use and then we have these ABC connections and they are marked up on here and for typical use you can see that they've got a loop here on the live and I've already got a live to my boiler it doesn't matter I don't need that so I just need to run a supply in neutral to this and all you have then is the A and B wires, then there'll be a link in the boiler. If you've got a time switch in your boiler, it'll go through the time switch. If your boiler hasn't got a time switch, you may find the cables just linked together into a little joint, block, into a little, uh, joint or you might find a little, a little loop connector inside there. And all you do is you remove the loop. Obviously, you follow the instructions for the boiler. You'd remove the loop and this connects in along in, in place of the loop. So this decides whether the boiler goes on or not. With the loop in place, it's always on. So you have this joining in instead of it. And it's as simple as that. I just stumbled across something interesting on this, well interesting to me anyway. With it powered up, if you press that button there, you can turn the boiler on. Independently of this thing controlling it, and if you press it again, it'll turn it back off. As you can see, it's the next day. I've changed the faceplate 
from uh, the white one to the black one because of uh, decided where, where it's going to go is going to sit on top of one of my black hi-fi speakers so it'll look better with that I've also changed the backdrop you can see there are four to choose from this is one of them you either have a digital clock or an analog clock or a digital clock with four of your um, your top four items around it or you can have an analog clock with all four items around it it'll fade out after uh, after about a minute I think it'll 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 fade back out as you'll see shortly um, something I found out last night is if you take this off the base and say take it to bed plonk it to the plonk it alongside your uh, bedside cabinet here we go it's gone darker now what you'll find is it'll it'll work quite happily there's quite an extensive battery life on it as far as I can tell but long long before the battery goes flat you'll start hearing this odd little beeping noise it's just a faint beep about once a minute and it's this thing this will do that every minute until uh, until you put it back on its base even though the batteries are fully charged which is a bit annoying really uh, you, you, know, you shouldn't have to take the whole you know take the base with you as well but uh, there we go I'll have a quick look around the back of the unit see what else we've got uh, on here there's this big thing that looks like a battery compartment but of course the batteries are under under the front here this I don't know exactly what it's for whether it's for development or programming or some optional extra if I can get the cover off but there we go it's got these 11 finger contacts at the bottom so it looks like it's either used for programming or this can be taken off and replaced with some extra gubbins to uh, to do more with it and we also have a mini USB B connector there's a micro one on the on the radiant heads this is a mini one and if you look on the internet you will see where people have meddled around and plugged plugged into this and um, interrogated it I'll leave you to uh, do a bit more googling to find out what, what's going on there I think they've done it with the earlier version of this that there was uh, the earlier versions of Evo Home were uh, black and white LCD display these are the, the full the brand new full color ones um, I think it was the black and white ones that they've been meddling around with that but I'll leave you to know on that and there's not much else to look at on here unless you actually took the thing apart and I don't particularly want to take the thing apart if I end up breaking it then yeah I'll do a tear down but as it is you can see there's no there's no screws available I think it there are it will unclip around there let's have a quick look As you can see, as soon as you do that, the power goes off. Even if you haven't removed the batteries. And there's two more clips under there. Dratch at least on the back. And you're in. Here we go. This is what's inside the Evo Home, and it's all based on an Atmel 8091 Sam 926 9261. And there's what looks like some flash memory and another some sort of hybrid all in one chip there. And on the other side, obviously, there's going to be there's some stuff down in there doesn't look like there's an awful lot in there it looks like a lot of discrete components in there rather than any ICs and obviously you've got your touch screen display on the top and that's about it there's not a lot to look at inside apart from that you can see there's this provision for other chips here and 
you know, and another one up there, and another header there. Looks like it's got it's got provision for another another header to uh, to solder on there. Anyway, let's get it back together again. And see now why it went off as soon as I start taking it apart. The battery contacts make contact there and and there. So now it's in place with the battery with the battery connections and that will snap back. Under at the top and two feels like you're gonna break it. Battery back in battery back in and thankfully it's booting back up just wants to know the time again uh, time oh the clock stopped I think or did it oh. yes the clock stopped it's actually 9 40 so that's just waiting to sync back up with the rest of the devices around the house. And I'll plonk it back on there in the meantime. Oh, there we go. They're just coming in back online now. And while we're waiting for it to come back online, let's have a look at the quick actions. So what you've got here is a button here which has got some quick settings on there. What did it know? No, I can't tell. I thought it wouldn't. Can't tell which way up it is. Um, it's quick actions button here, and we have options here which are you can put into economy mode, which just knocks everything you've got set, knocks it down by three degrees. You can set it your your away, so it'll set all the rooms for fifteen degrees. You can choose a day off, so whatever schedule you've got on a Saturday, you can say right, okay, today is the same as Saturday. We'll have today's settings again. You can shut the whole system down. Or you can have a custom he heating schedule, and I'd have to look in the manual for that. I, I still haven't read through the manual. I'm resisting the urge to read through the manual, but uh, hopefully that will come in. That will become clearer when um, when the rest of the system is programmed up. So let's cancel that. Um, another thing you can do with these quick actions is if you press and hold the button you can see we've got economy mode there for example reduce all room temperatures by three degrees if I press and hold it I can choose right I'll, instead of having it on until until I come back and cancel it I can say we'll have economy action on for one hour or two hours or let's see how far up it goes up to 24 hours of economy mode. So if I do that, you can see there it's got a, a timer. Oops, it had a timer until I just canceled it. Um, it had a timer on it showing when it was going to uh, expire and return to normal operation. And that's the same for all of these quick actions. You can press and hold them and decide, in fact, for the away action, I can be off uh, and you can choose with this one you can choose when you're going to how many days you're going to be away for Let's see how far up it goes it looks like it'll support a very extended holiday I don't know if I can, can I press on that? No, I, I can't, I can't actually set it as a calendar entry. I've got to scroll through. So uh, a bit annoying, annoying if this is in a holiday home, for example, and uh, you've got to set it all the way up. There we go, it'll support up to a 99 day away action. You just press okay on that. And there we go, it's got 99 days remaining and it's, it'll knock everything now. See, it's waiting for the other ones still to come into sync, uh, but it'll knock them all to the 15 degree setting. So it'll it'll set them all back, and it'll hold that for 99 days, or if I cancel it like that. Uh, we've got the day off. 
Can I schedule a day off? Oh, there we go. You can choose how many days off you're going to get. Again, presumably it'll go up to 99 days. So cancel that. Um, heating off. Heating off doesn't seem to allow scheduling. Let's cancel that and try again. Yeah, we don't have a kit with the heating off. If you shut the heating off, it's going to stay off until you come back and turn it back on. You can't time it off. You probably have to set, um, possibly do a custom, uh, one of your custom settings and set all the rooms right down to five degrees or something like that. So that's the quick actions. We also have settings where we've got the device settings. We can set the date and time, the language. You can enter a password uh, to lock the system so you can't, uh, so nobody can meddle with it. It's, uh, let's try that. Oh, there we go. You can choose to uh, to lock the idle screen or you can lock the, uh, the temperature adjustment. Uh, if you've got it on the idle screen, then nobody can meddle with the system at all. They can look, they can't touch. Uh, this one, temperature adjustment only, means you can uh, you can do temporary settings in the in the system, so you can temporarily turn turn settings up and down, but you can't change the system. You can't change the schedule at all. We have the idle screen. And you can see these are the four choices, as I said earlier on. We've got, let's bring that up so you see a bit better. There's the clock, two different clocks and two different um, two different um, clocks with temperatures around the side. And you can choose the, the timeout, how long before it fails, before it gives up on whatever you're doing and returns to this screen. And that choice is, we've got... Um, 30 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, or it turn it off so it's always going to be showing the, um, the active display. And night mode, you can schedule this as to when it flips between its, uh, its dark settings and its light settings. It's got two different, this is the day, uh, the day mode at the moment as you can see with the, uh, with the lighting. If I go into night mode and change that to... Nine fifty. We'll see it trip into night mode in about two minutes' time. What else have we got? We've got room settings. We can rename the rooms. If you didn't like the names that have been set up beforehand, you can just go into the rooms and you can edit the names. And you can also change the room order and for this all you do is this is the order they're going to display on the display when you see it on here and it's that one it's one two three four five six and so on so it counts that way so uh, as you can see I've got bedroom one bedroom two bedroom three on that order I actually had those as the fourth fifth and sixth and all you do to do that is you choose, you punch the, the, the buttons in the order you want them to, to show up. So if I want them to actually show up, um, if I want to flip them around actually, I can do that, then that, then that, then that, then that, then that, 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 and that. If I now go back, we now have them arranged. That way, so you just push push the buttons in the order you want them to show up. But remember, of course, this will have a knock-on effect on, presumably have a knock-on effect on the screensaver as well. Um, let's have a look at the um, idle screen. Change that to 30 seconds. And we'll see now. Um, I expect we'll just see living room, dining room, bedroom one, kitchen and bedroom two, but uh, we'll see now. Oh, and there goes the night mode. It's 9.50, so it's changed to the 
the dark setting. There's no automatic backlight detection. It's all just done with the timer. And there we go. As I said, it's just taken the first, the first um, four on the uh, on the display, the, the left hand four. So you've got living room, dining room, bedroom one, kitchen, bedroom two. So that's the first, the leftmost ones in this setting here. So these are the ones you'll see on your screensaver. I can also check on here and so quick actions. These are the settings. Um, if you do those quick actions, uh, if you've got a day off, it's Saturday's schedule you're going to use during the day off. You can choose any one of your normal schedules that is going to be your day off schedule. Your, if you're away, you set for 15 degrees. Again, if you're going to be away for a long time, you could set that right the way down. Uh, your, you know, it's, instead of doing the heating off, which we know we can't, we can't schedule. The custom one. We can view or edit the schedule for the custom setting, or we can go through the wizard. We'll come back to this, and I'll won't even bother assigning rooms to the custom schedule because it's all it's all hopefully going to become clear later on. And we'll take a look now at the schedule. And if I go to press on any one of these schedules, it'll ask me to use the wizard or edit manually. And you can see at the moment, will it let me scroll? No, it won't let me scroll. Um, we can see this is your 24 hours, in fact. Um, midnight to midnight. And this is out of the box. It's set so that this is, I think this is actually 16 degrees. It's not showing you, but I think it sets back to 16 degrees when it's uh, for the, the night period. Then at 6.30 until 8, it jumps itself up to, I believe, 21 degrees, the same as this. Then it sets itself back to 18 degrees for most of the day, up until 6 p.m. And then jumps up to 21 degrees again up until 10.30 and then back down to 16 degrees again. And that is your Monday, to, uh, Monday to, in fact, your Sunday to Saturday, sorry, your Monday to Friday schedule. Sunday to Saturday, you can see at nine o'clock, sorry, at eight o'clock, it jumps up. And I don't know what the temperature is. We may see that uh, later on when we look at the settings and it stays at 21 degrees and confirms again actually 21 degrees from 6 o'clock right up until 11 when it drops back to the 16 degree setting again. And these settings out of the box are affecting all the zones. So, this still, oh here we go, it's picked up a couple more, there's a few more creeping in bit by bit. This isn't one of the ones I tweaked, I actually tweaked to the uh, one of the ones in the living and dining room and you can see if they're out of action it doesn't want to actually do anything with them. If you press one you can bring up an override and you can do a set point temperature on it. You can say actually I want the temperature in bedroom one to be 20 degrees until 10.30. So this will override the schedule or I can just say that actually I want it to be 21, 20 degrees Permanently. See what happens if it. See what happens to this schedule if I do that. And in fact, you can see it's cleared the whole time, the whole schedule. And it says right, okay. Until I do otherwise, that room is at twenty degrees. So let's cancel that, and it's gone back to the schedule again. And I'm not going to edit the schedule there. I'm going to go to the schedule here and let's just press it and let's bite the bullet and we'll actually use the wizard now. Use the wizard. Okay, select the days with the same schedule. Now I know I've got Monday, Wednesday and Thursday which are all the same schedule and I have a different schedule on Tuesday and Friday and a different schedule on Saturday and Sunday. So let's go and take a look 
at these and you can choose when someone starts using the zone in the morning I'm just going to give an example I'm just going to set an example here and set it up actually as I need it later on so that could be you can see we've got 10 minute intervals at which point we can set when it's going to be uh, what um, what's happening and interestingly it's I don't know why it's saying that for back rooms there you just go back it's possibly because I picked one of those so I'll go the week instead actually and use the wizard there Right, this time, right, same living dining room this time. It may give me the option to repeat the schedule later on. We'll see now. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, and we'll have 7.30 start. And from 7.30, I would like the temperature to be 20 degrees. Will the zone be occupied all day? No. When does the last person leave for work? And we can set it to an example time and okay that when it's unoccupied we'll have it at let's throttle it back to 16 degrees okay will someone return to the work during the day for lunch for example yeah go on then we'll have a half hour we'll have a half hour lunch from 12 30 and we'll have I think 21 is a bit rich again we'll have 20 degrees until 11 and a half hour lunch what time does someone come back after work? Now obviously it's gone back, so it's had that little interval. It's gone back to the, the 16 degrees setting now. Someone comes back from work. Okay. Someone's back in from work. And we'll have it at, again, 20 degrees. And we'll have it at 20 degrees until, yeah, we'll go, we'll go for 10.30. And during the night, we'll drop back to 15 degrees again. So... These are the times it's now programmed in on its schedule. And let's OK that. And we can create a schedule for other, for other days or we can copy the schedule to another zone. Because this, of course, was just for the living and dining room. I can choose completely different schedules for different rooms. So that's fine for me coming into the dining room. I don't need to go into the spare bedrooms. For, in fact, I don't need to go into any of the bedrooms for that. Or I can say that um, I may go into the kitchen and pop into the study. I'm not going to. Um, we'll have some we'll have a bit of a warm welcome in the hall at least. And OK that. Uh, replace the, the schedule for those selected rooms? Yes. And you can see now we've got these different schedules for those particular days. And if I view by the day, we've got different schedules for different rooms. You can see the kitchen and the, and the living and dining room all of a sudden have these completely different settings now. Where they'll be a bit cooler in the back rooms during the day. But they've got this little blip for lunch, a little blip in the morning and a longer evening at a different temperature. And you can see we've got... We've got more rooms as well. So this is how you can actually customize it. Uh, that was just picking one day. I can pick another day, another room, and give it a specific schedule, and so on. So you can see it's very flexible. So you can say, for example, might be coming home at five. I don't want to go into the bedroom until later on, so I can set the bedroom timer to come in a bit later. And then... Uh, obviously, you know, around about that time, so we'll have an earlier shutdown of the living room, and we'll have so we'll have say an hour an hour longer in the bedroom than in the living room. Shut the rest of the built, you know, shut the rest of the house down. Um, the kids may go to bed earlier, so you'd have another an hour early on the bedrooms, so uh, on the children's bedrooms, but leaving your bedroom out of it because your bedroom's going to be later on, perhaps. One of the bedrooms is a spare bedroom, so you can just leave that pretty much shut down until you want it. Just leave the schedule pretty much blank to 15 degrees all the time, 
or you could go in and override that schedule for that room and just leave it in at 15 degrees all the time. So you can see it's very flexible. And there's some more which have come on. It's very flexible in what it can in what it can do. Let's take a look at the what else was there? There was a quick action and there was a custom heating schedule. And I don't know what it's done. Of course, what I've got to do is settings, um, quick actions, custom, and this is where you can edit your custom heating schedule. This could be you know some special occasion where you need the whole house on or um, someone's coming to visit, put the guest bedrooms on or, or, and whatnot. You can do all these settings here. And in fact, there's a wizard here for doing your custom schedule and you can choose when does someone start using the zones let's go through these um, no so there we go we've got a fairly simple schedule there and so we've got this custom heating schedule now which is set up and if I now go in and I can assign rooms to that custom schedule so I can say that that custom schedule is going to be just for the living room, dining room and one of the bedrooms and those ones. And I can just go back out of here now. So I'm in my normal day to day setup and all change. Let's go in. I need that custom schedule. Let's do it and I can cancel that or I can press I can sort of press and hold on the custom heating schedule and we'll say right okay we're going to have that custom heating schedule for one day and you can see here these are the rooms which are affected by this custom heating schedule it's not affecting bedroom one it's not affecting the back rooms it's affecting that one these are the settings that are currently requested on there based on the schedule I can cancel that. So if you watch again now, we've got 20 degrees set for the living and dining room. If I go into that custom heating schedule, it's actually set for 21. And we've got a few settings here as well. And if I cancel this, they revert to those. So the figures down here are, oops, the, um, the current settings that we, that we actually want those rooms to be at and the, the figures above then the bigger figures are what the radiator head is telling this the actual room temperature is so you can see at a glance for any given room you can see we've got eight of the ten zones come in now uh, for any room you can see this is what we've got it set to and this is actually the temperature in that room and you can see right now it's just realized now that we wanted to uh, drop the temperature down on here I don't know if the other ones are going to come in I'm not sure what um, oh, of course I've only set the the schedule I programmed earlier on was only affecting a few of these rooms so it's uh, it's all a bit mad at the moment but you can see that mad eccentric flexible I'd like to call it flexible because you can, you can set up, it's basically like having an individual room timer for every room in the house. Up to 12, well basically up to up to 12 room timers across the house. Each one can, could control one or two radiators. Instead of having one on the wall, which is what you'd have, for example, if you had um, a Hive pro, uh, programmable system, you've got up to 12. I've got this set for 10, I, didn't, I don't need 12. And of course, you can you can also um, interact with this using this using the mobile access gateway. That's enough about programming with this. Let's go take a look at the mobile access gateway in action. Just one more quick thing on the schedule. When you want to copy a schedule, you have a choice of either copying Saturday's schedule to another day, and that will affect just the. The room you're working on, there's you know, the um, room or group of rooms 
you're working on or copy the weekly schedule to another room which will take your entire Sunday to Saturday schedule and put that entire cut schedule and copy it over another another room so I think your best bet is if you sort out your day-to-day -day bits and pieces um, through the week first for uh, a given room uh, copying day day to day to day if necessary once you've got that right clone that to the next rooms that you want to copy into or all if you want to edit them afterwards because you can always go back in and edit them manually later on so do a room just so you like it copy it to the other ones and then um, repeat for any other rooms you want to tweak or again um, copy to all the other rooms, tweak one of them, copy that to the, other, to the other ones which you don't want to be the same as the first one and so on and that's probably the best way to get yourself your um, quite what could be quite a complex day-to-day -day room schedule. Now something I find quite niggling with the uh, the Talk Connect Comfort website is that when you go in there Obviously this is internet enabled so you can access it. If you look on one of the international websites it says that Total Connect Comfort can be allows you to control your heating, ventilation and air conditioning from your PC or smartphone. Obviously this is the European version and this display is not replicated in any shape or form as far as I can tell on the website. Whether it's coming soon, I don't know. I mean, they've had the older ones for a while, so there's no real excuse for it not to be on here, but it's not on there. You can go to, you can click on your home location, and that just lets you add or delete another one of these, uh, one of these Evo homes from the, from the system, or control who's actually got access to it, um, who gets email notifications and whatnot. But no actual control of this. Even you know, in which case, why tell people on the website that it's all, that Total Connect Comfort is optimized to work with all mainstream web browsers? I've tried it on. It says IE eight or above. I've tried it on IE eleven. It says Firefox nineteen or above. I've tried it on Firefox twenty eight, Safari six and above. I've tried. I've tried it on Safari seven. I've tried two different operating systems, and this is not controllable from there. What you need, it turns out, is a smartphone. I don't have a smartphone. So this is BlueStacks running on Windows. Um, it's a beta version. It did just pop up just now asking to try and install some software in order to continue working with it uh, because it's, uh, although it's free, it's like sort of sponsorware if you like. So this is what you get on your smartphone. Uh, it will work in in fact, it'll normally work in ta in tablet um, in so in portrait mode. This is in landscape mode. So you see, you've got access to pretty much what you'd normally get on the display on here. You can see what the temperatures are in the different rooms. Although it's it's not actually quite it's not quite up to date with what's on the uh, on the display on the on the gateway. It's actually half a degree out on on there. So it's um, it's a little way out on on there. I don't know how how far out it is, but you can choose, you can click on one and you can change your uh, your target temperature, you can just click on it and drag your slider and change the temperature, if I zoom out slightly here we'll see how, how long it takes to to kick in on here, so if I set that target temperature, in fact it will go all the way up, now remember these only, those thermostats only stopped at 30 once they communicate with this, they will actually turn the tap up and can communicate all the way up to 30 and can set the temperature all the way up to 35. So let's just set that, just something bonkers, and set until um, 11.20. So we'll set that and save it. And what we should see at some point is the living and dining room setting on here oh there we go it's picked it up already and that's now set itself up to 35 degrees so that's going to fire up the boiler and try and cook the living room only until 
1120 when it will switch back down or I can click on it again and I can cancel that override. And you can see that just changed pretty much straight away and also I don't know if you noticed on there if you do set a time like that uh, let's just do a permit one for now the setting on the the on the unit itself indicates trying to get that back into focus there's a little smartphone icon to show where it's actually got that set in from so you know it's not on the schedule or something like that it's been it's been programmed in so let's just go back in and cancel that and we'll see what else we can do in the smartphone app oh incidentally we can also see here the quadrants on the screensaver will represent what that room is doing whether it's a green sort of middling temperature orange for like sort of 20, 20 odds or if you're cooking the room you've got a nice big red one or the blue ones because they've gone they've actually been told to, to drop down to 15 degrees and we'll see that change shortly but you can see it's already changed there so what else do we have let's go back to this tile option here we've got the uh, the location and the weather and the outside temperature which is picked up from the internet gateway we can take a look at the individual ones and set the target temperature or have a look at, uh, you can see we've got the, where we've already been uh, let's see and that that little beep then was this starting its one per minute beep and the, the battery gauge is right at the top of the moment but it's going to start beeping once a minute now because it wants to be plugged back into the mains it doesn't care even though it's actually on its dock it wants it wants mains power so let's see what else we've got on here uh, if I click on that down arrow here we go we can choose the same as these quick actions on here you can set your economy away day off schedule you can do a custom heating schedule so you can poke and prod this system while you're away as long as you've got a smartphone, there's um, there's an iOS app, so it'll work on an iPad or an iPhone, and there's an Android app as well. Um, there's no PC app, at least there doesn't appear to be a PC app available in the UK. At least there doesn't appear to be a PC app available in the UK yet. And if you have if if you haven't got a smartphone, you can try using something like BlueStacks, but obviously if you if you're in work, you may well be behind a firewall and need proxy server settings entered and BlueStacks doesn't support it so you're out of luck there so if you're going to remote control this remotely you really do need some sort of smart device to do it we can see where we've got heating off we can't schedule or we can't schedule the heating off there let's uh, do that again click down on the home and do the day off schedule and once again same as on here you can select until you can pick your, your day as to how long it's going to be off until. In fact, it's a little. It's actually quicker than doing it on there actually because you can go, you can whiz straight through the days quite quickly. And I'll just done, and we'll cancel that. Uh, what else do we have? Is that clickable? Yes, that's clickable. We've got the the, um, the current conditions, partly cloudy, and the temperature. We've got percentage humidity. We've got a small weather forecast here for the days ahead. Uh, there's wind speed in kilometers per hour. Oh, great. And the percentage chance of rain. Let's take a look. I'm just guessing now. Can I click on another day? Nope, I can't click on another day. You just got these um just got the icons, you'll have to wait until then or go to weather.com. So let's go back up. What else do we have? We have yeah, that's the whole bar across the top for the location. There's a little button here which just takes you back so you can actually log out of the system. The first time you run 
the the application you, you need to log into the the Honeywell site and so that's what that is let's just click that back and that's pretty much it so if you click on it you go there if you click on the little one it's still there it's just the whole thing is one big clickable tile so you can set your target schedule and set it until a certain time or you can set it permanently and there you go the other thing according to the instructions is if you set the the temperature on the thermostat itself this will take precedence until the next time the one of the schedule things kicks in so even if you've got like sort of three schedules in the day which are all 20 degrees once the next schedule clicks in that will take over this unless this has been wound off if it's off it's off this won't talk to it it can talk to it but it can't control it this says nope this radiator is staying off and I think that's about it for uh, for Evo Home for now uh, I don't think there's much else to to show on it I've shown you it doing this once a minute beep we've gone through these I haven't torn this apart it looks a bit uh, a bit fiddly to get back together again to be honest so uh, I'm not going to rip I'm not going to rip that apart you've seen inside there and you've seen inside the the boiler controller and you've seen I've taken it taking you through all the functions on there I've shown you the the Android application um, I've shown you it not working on the website so um, stay tuned hopefully we'll see uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll see a big drop in my uh, my energy bill which at the moment I'm paying about 170 quid a month for electricity and gas combined I'm hoping that will come down because quite a bit of that was the, the gas bill and the other thing I want to try with this is I'm going to take this and the reason this rad head hasn't been fitted yet is I'm going to take this and this down to a friend's house because he's got um, a rather large house with um, stupidly thick walls and it, you know, it's it's an old house which has been done up so it, it looks quite modern but the walls are you know behind, they're about 18 inches thick 18 inches two foot thick and they're stone so uh, it'd be interesting to see how well this can handle one of these for example being up in the in the converted loft with this downstairs also the boiler is relatively simple because that's cabled you can run the cable to where to put the the receiver where somewhere where this can pick it up you know so we'll, we'll stay tuned for that I'll, I may uh, add a comment on the video about the performance on this through uh, in such a large building uh, in, such a, in such a large sort of um, non radio friendly building if you like and um, hope you like it thanks for watching catch you soon